Building a Johnson Zoo bioreactor composter is a great way to make rich, microbially diverse, and fungal dominant compost. The process takes anywhere from eight months to a year to make a finished product, but the mature compost can be applied directly to your field or used as an extract to inoculate the microbes in your soil. In addition to the microbial and fungal benefits of a Johnson Zoo bioreactor, this compost does not need turning because it breaks down aerobically. The Johnson Sioux bioreactor can be built in four to five hours by one person using simple tools and supplies found around the farm or at your local hardware store. For the supplies, you'll need one wooden shipping pallet, approximately 40 by 48 inches, woven landscape cloth, wire remesh, and four 10-foot lengths of perforated bell-end four-inch septic drain pipes. For tools, you'll need a tape measure, tie wire or rope, scissors for cutting the cloth, sharpie or pencil for marking holes, a circular saw or a hand saw for cutting the drain pipes, a reciprocating saw, pliers, and PVC glue. To build the wire cage, cut the wire remesh to about 12 and a half feet in length and five feet in height. Form it into a cylinder and use pliers to bend the ends so that they stay together. Then, using the landscape cloth, cover the inside of the wire cylinder. Depending on the cloth, it may take several pieces. To secure the cloth to the wire cage, use baling twine or tie wire and weave it in between the remesh so that the landscape fabric covers the entire cylinder. Next, you will want to prepare the base that will hold your drain pipes and the bioreactor. Cut six holes into the pallet. The holes should be four inches in diameter to accommodate the drain pipes, one in the center and five that are equal distant from the center, approximately 72 degrees apart. I used a protractor app on my phone to help measure the degrees. Use a reciprocating saw to cut the holes. Then, using a piece of landscape cloth, cover the base so that there is excess on the ends and cut holes into the landscape cloth over where the holes in the pallet are. The next step is making your drain pipes. Using a saw, cut the 10 foot pipes so that you have four four foot pieces of pipe left with bell ends. Glue two of these four foot pipes together and then cut them to six feet so that you have six six foot pipes. You can tie a rope around the tops to make them easier to place in the bioreactor. Place the bioreactor on the base and secure it with nails or screws. Then place the drain pipes in the bioreactor, setting them in the pre-cut holes of the pallet. I made a jig out of a piece of cattle panel to hold the pipes in place while the bioreactor is being filled. The bioreactor is now ready to be filled. You can put any compostable material in the bioreactor. Any large debris should be run through a chipper to break it down. Make sure that there is adequate moisture in the compost as you are filling it. After 24 hours, remove the drain pipes. These are just to create air pockets in the compost pile. Because the bioreactor uses aerobic decomposition, the tube pockets allow air to reach all parts of the compost pile. If you don't want to make a full-scale bioreactor, you can always scale it down. It is important to remember that all parts of the compost should be within 12 inches of ambient air because this is how far air can penetrate into compost. The compost should maintain roughly 70% moisture at all times, which might mean watering it for a minute each day, depending on your climate.